Here we'll learn about amoeba and flagellates that cause gastrointestinal and urogenital illness. Separately, we'll learn about the ciliates and apicomplexic protozoans that cause similar illnesses. To begin, start a table and denote some key points. Of the amoeba, we'll learn about the genus Entamoeba, which causes amoebiasis. We'll also learn about the flagellates, Giardia and Trichomonas, which cause gastrointestinal illness and urogenital infection. To note that the gastrointestinal parasites are transmitted via the fecal oral route. They're especially common in crowded institutionalized settings, such as daycares and prisons. They're often endemic in areas with poor sanitation where water sources are contaminated. To note that Trichomonas vaginalis, a urogenital parasite, is transmitted via sexual contact. To note that the diagnosis of GI parasites relies on findings of trophozoite or cyst forms in the stool, fecal antigen tests, or serology. Trichomonas vaginalis can be observed in urogenital secretions. Culture is more sensitive, but takes a few days. Most infections can be treated with metronidazole. Next, let's begin our diagram, which will focus on the pathogenesis of these organisms. See the links in our notes for additional images. First, write that the most important causative agent of amoebiasis is an amoeba histolytica. Indicate that many individuals are asymptomatic reservoirs. Other patients develop intestinal amoebiasis, which is sometimes called amoebic dysentery. Write that it's characterized by abdominal pain, colitis, and diarrhea. Blood may be present in the stool. If the parasites reach the bloodstream, patients can have extra intestinal amoebiasis. Because the trophozoites can get caught in the liver as they move through the hepatic portal system, liver involvement is the most common extra intestinal manifestation. Write that liver abscesses and pain, especially in the right upper quadrant, as well as hepatomegaly and leukocytosis, are associated with hepatic amoebiasis. Let's illustrate the course of an amoeba histolytica in the human host. First, show that cysts are ingested in contaminated water. In the drawing, show the cyst's multiple nuclei and elongated chromatoid body. Then in the small intestine, show that the trophozoites are released from the cysts by a process called excystation, and that they migrate to the large intestine. In the large intestine, show that the trophozoites multiply and some transform to the inactive cyst form of a process called encystation. This prepares them for survival in the external environment. Write that the trophozoites release cytotoxins that destroy host tissues and show that they can ingest red blood cells. In the histological image of the large intestine, highlight an example of the characteristic flask-shaped lesion produced by invasive amoebiasis. This helps us make sense of the species named histolytica, which combines Greek words for tissue and dissolving. Next, show that trophozoites can invade deeper tissues. Once they reach the bloodstream, they can be disseminated and cause extraintestinal disease. As mentioned, the liver is most commonly affected. Indicate that other important targets include the lungs and brain. Then indicate that trophozoites and cysts are excreted in the feces. Recall that trophozoites cannot survive in the external environment, but the cysts, with their protective coverings, are adapted to survive until ingested by the next host. Finally, write the following diagnostic tip. In fecal samples, one must be careful not to confuse Entamoeba histolytica with a morphologically similar species, Entamoeba dispar, which is a non-pathological commensal. A helpful distinguisher is that only Entamoeba histolytica engulfs red blood cells, although these may not always be visible. And write that carriers of Entamoeba histolytica can be prescribed chromomyosin or iodoquinol. As we denoted in our table, treatment for active amoebiasis typically involves metronidazole. Next, let's learn about giardiasis, which is caused by Giardia duodenalis, also referred to as Giardia lamblia or Giardia intestinalis. Write that approximately half of infected people are asymptomatic, when symptomatic intestinal illness ranges from mild diarrhea to severe malabsorption. Indicate that giardiasis produces water or fatty, foul-smelling diarrhea with bloating and flatulence. However, unlike amoebiasis, bloody stools are rare because the causative parasites are not invasive. Also, unlike amoebiasis, extra-intestinal spread is rare. However, post complications are reported, including lactose intolerance and irritable bowel syndrome. 
indicate that uraniasis pathogenesis is similar to immune biases. We'll highlight some key exceptions. First, let's draw a simplified Giardia duodenalis trophozoic. Show its pear-shaped body with flagella. Indicate the two nuclei and surrounding them the large adhesive disc, also referred to as the ventral disc. Write that this disc facilitates firm adhesion to the villi of the small intestine. Then write that the parasites damage the enterocytes, leading to diarrhea and inhibition of nutrient absorption. Again, because the parasites are rarely invasive, giardiasis is not typically associated with bloody stools. However, write that chronic giardiasis can lead to developmental impairment. This is a major concern in developing countries, for example, where the effects of giardiasis exacerbate existing malnutrition. Finally, write that trichomoniasis is caused by trichomonas vaginalis. This protozoan has no cyst form. Thus, its trophozoites, which can't survive outside the host, are transmitted during sexual contact in urogenital secretions. Write that trichomoniasis is the most common non-viral sexually transmitted infection in the United States. However, most infected individuals, especially males, are asymptomatic carriers. Show that when symptomatic, trichomoniasis produces vaginitis or urethritis and sometimes prostatitis. Vaginitis and urethritis are characterized by a burning, itchy sensation and may be accompanied by a foul-smelling or frothy discharge. Let's draw a simplified trichomonas vaginalis to show some of its distinguishing features. First, draw an oblong shape with a nucleus. Indicate the axostyle, which runs the length of the body and extends posteriorly, four anterior flagella, and the undulating membrane, which is a modified fifth flagellum. This concludes our diagram.